Hello and welcome. This is Real Numbers video number seven, and today we are going to prove a small theorem. Now, this theorem is going to be very important in making us or in helping us prove bigger things. For example, in our previous classes, we have learned that square root two, square root three, square root five, so on and so forth. These are irrational numbers, but we never actually proved why they were irrational numbers. So that is going to change. In this class, we are going to prove those are irrational numbers. But before we can do that, we will need to get this proof done because we are going to use this proof to prove those other things. <laughs> I know it may sound all confusing. Let's go ahead and first find out how to prove this. So here we are trying to prove that if P is a prime number and if P divides A square, what is A square? Well, A is any positive number or integer. So we have A as any positive integer. So we do a, a square and if p divides a square then theorem is saying that p must divide a all right now let's take a quick look at what does it mean so let's do one thing let's do a prime factorization of a now if so a is any positive integer now we can write a as p1 times p2 times p3 times dot 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 pn where p1 p2 p3 pn they are all prime numbers so why can we do this recall that we have learned fundamental theorem of arithmetic and what does it state fundamental theorem of arithmetic states that every composite number and a is a positive integer so which is a composite number every composite number can be factorized as a product of prime and in one and only one unique way. All right, so let's go back again. So what we have here is we have written our composite number as a product of prime numbers, right? Now, there may be repetitions. For example, let's say, so if, if A were equal to say six, then what we are doing is we are writing six as two times three. That is all what we are doing. So if a, let's say, were 12, then we are going to write this as 2 times 2 times 3, right? So here we have the number 2 repeating twice. So here a has p1, p2, p3, all the way to pn, and there may be some repetitions. Now what we are going to do is we are going to do a squared, right? Because it is given to us that a squared is divisible by p. So let's find out a squared. So what will be a squared? Well, a square will be simply p1 times p2 times p3 dot 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 all the way to pn and this entire thing which is a will be multiplied by itself so we are going to have again p1 times p2 times p3 dot 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 times pn right so when we multiply what do we get well we will get then p1 square times p2 square times p3 square dot 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 all the way to pn square. So our a square is going to be this number, right? Now it is given to us that a square is divisible by p where p is any prime number. That means this entire thing can be divisible by p. Now let's think about it for a moment. Now if we say that this number, each of the p's in the numerator, they are prime factors, prime numbers. So p1 squared times p2 squared times p3 squared all, of, all the way to pn squared. If this entire thing is divisible by p, what does it mean? It means where p is a prime number, it means one of these prime numbers, it must be equal to p. Why is that? So let's say for example, our a looks something like this, say 2 squared times 3 squared times 11 squared. I'm just making it up. Now, if we say that this thing is divisible by another prime, what do you think are possible values for our prime here? Well, this can be either the number 2, or it can be 3, or it can be 11. Can this prime number be 7 or 5? Answer is no. In other words, one of the prime factors of A must be p right in other words we should be able to write the number a 
as uh, we don't know what are all the other prime numbers, but we know that P is one of the prime numbers. So maybe it is like P times P1 times P2 dot 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 Pn. We don't know what are the other prime factors, but we know that P is definitely one of the factors. Now, if that is true, then we can simply divide A by P, right? Because if we do this division, then P and P will cancel out. So that means that if, if A squared is divisible by p, that means that a must be divisible by p. I shouldn't say equal, this leads to this. So this is a very fundamental, this is well not fundamental theorem of arithmetic, but this is a very important theorem. And in the next video, we're going to learn how to use this to prove that square root 2, square root 3, square root 5, so on and so forth are indeed irrational numbers.